Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I would like to welcome you all to Resurrection Sunday. Amen. I pray that you all will be blessed. And I pray that God's resurrected power will be with you all. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. In His presence, in His presence, there is joy. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Today is Resurrection Sunday. And I remember what you were. I'm always happy to be 
you know us of the Lord. But today we extra, extra happy virgin. And so today we're just here to have fun and just lift up the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name Jesus. Hallelujah.
just one to eight. St. John chapter 20, reading from verse 1 to verse 8. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you all please stand? Will you get stand for the reading of God's holy word? Amen. <laughs> the first day of the week, commit Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre. And the sea and the stone taken away from the sepulchre. And she ran into the cave and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciples who Jesus loved and said about to them, They who have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have been. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran all together, and the other disciple did all the work of Peter, and he first the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloth, cloth lying yet, went he not in. Then came Simon Peter upon him, and went in the sepulchre, and saved the linen cloth. And the napkin, that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but wrapped together in a place by itself. And went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. And the disciples went away again. But Mary stood with, without at the sepulchre, weeping, and as she wept, she stood down and looked into the sepulchre and said to the angels in white city, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had that was laid, she turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposed him to be the gardener. Said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him, else tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto me, Rabbi, which is the same master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken unto her. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We honor God's word by saying, Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it's now in the shouting, for the heart of Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, oh. 
and then at the end we'll give you a big model welcome. So when I call your name, please stand and remain standing and until the end. We have Latavia Brown with us. Bless the Lord. Just wave your hand. Bless the Lord. We also have Tony and Palmer with us. Tony and Palmer. Bless the Lord. Alima Harper. Bless the Lord. Stemar, is it Stemar Lindsay? Shemar. Bless God. Please stand. Amen. Roshane Foster. Rahim Morgan. Amen. Kayla Williams. Kayla. Okay, the young girl. Bless God. And Tefani Drummond. Bless the Lord. Give a big round of applause to all of us. Are part of the community um, youth club, and in May they have already asked for permission to have their um, launch here. So it's good that you have already greeted us with your presence, and we look forward to a great launch as we continue to partner with you, the young people of this community, and let you know that this church is for you, and that you will surrender to the Lord because this is your purpose to give Him praise. I also see some other faces. So I want to take time to acknowledge them. I see a sister here in the middle. Please stand. Bless the Lord. Give her a big round of applause. Amen. So glad to have you this. There's also in the middle here, in front, Brother Ben. Please stand, mommy, in the white um, town. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Give her a big round of applause. Praise God. And then we have the regular visitors like Cynthia. Amen. And Sal. Amen. Simone. And uh, you don't have to call names a challenge. So greetings to everyone, and I trust that your hearts will be blessed today. Good to see you again, um, our sister, um, as you continue to come. And everyone in the house of the Lord, it's Resurrection Sunday, and it's just an exciting feeling to be in the house of the Lord. We also have greetings coming from Little Miss, that's Sister Lorna's granddaughter. She is overseas. Always online in Bible study and Sunday service and otherwise. And she's sending greetings today. We continue to pray for her, that God will bless her. If there's anything else for you to know, you hear them as the week progress. Please be reminded that we tomorrow is holiday, wherever you are, continue to pray and just ask God's blessing upon our church, upon our leaders, upon our nation. Prayer is never too much. So you continue to pray. We join again on Thursday night for Bible study in the sanctuary and online. So please remember that. God bless you today as I am back to our moderator in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Bishop Williams, for giving the notice and
Leroy Harrison, and his nephew with us. Praise God. He's coming for 9 30. <laughs> Let's start and he's in the house and we give God thanks for you. Praise God. We want to announce that on the 24th, we'll be having a prayer war. Uh, evangelist, please remind us of the time. At 4 p.m. Right, so we want all the saints to be ready for that as we will have our prayer walk. So even now, we will continue to pray that God will prepare us and help us that we will go forward and make an impact in the community. God bless you, our moderator. Oh, 
prayer that God will give you the better part of all you going to be in the name of Jesus. That's why we are beacons.
greet everybody in Salway School. You may be seated to see the brethren as you come to give the Lord the worship that is due to him. And today is a very special day. It's the happiest day on the Christian calendar. It is the day of the Lord's resurrection. It's the day that the church can revel in the hope that it has. It is the day when the church says, yes, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And so I, I'm just elated to be in the presence of the Lord this morning and to see all of you uh, as you have come to give the Lord the worship that's due to his holy name. Praise God. Just want to also recognize those who are watching us on YouTube and Facebook. And it's always, always good to know that there are persons who really want to worship God and especially to, you know, join us as we worship Him. So the Lord bless you richly. Praise God. Today, you know, I just want to speak to you on this theme, Jesus our ever-living hope. Jesus, our ever-living hope. Praise God. And we're going to be talking about the return to the tomb, the rising from the tomb, the revealing by the angels and the responsibility that we have today as we celebrate Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, I just worship you this morning and give you thanks for your exalted name. Truly, you are wonderful and you are great. You are bought our redemption and for that we give you thanks. Lord, as I stand to speak to your people today, Lord, I pray that that same resurrection power will be felt in their hearts and it will go with them as they leave this sanctuary. I pray God that as your word, you know, just come to their hearts, God, that they will be lifted up from whatever their situation is this morning, whatever they have come with, Lord, that your word will pierce through that darkness and they will come alive and with the understanding that you are God. Father, we pray your blessing on us. Jesus name. Praise God. I just want to go to the text that was read this morning and just to read a couple verses from it. It was read as the devotional scripture, but I just want us to just to meditate upon verse 10 to verse 18 or so. St. John 20. Then the disciples went back again to their homes. I want you to focus on that verse. Then the disciples, Peter and John, they went back to their lodging places. But Mary remained standing outside the tomb, sobbing. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. And they said to her, Woman, why are you sobbing? She told them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. On saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know or recognize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying so much? For whom are you looking? Supposing that it was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you carried him away from here, Tell me where you are putting, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Turning around, she said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher or master. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me. Do not hold me. 
for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. And away came Mary Magdalene, bringing the disciples news that she had seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. Praise God for his words this morning. Jesus is no longer in the tomb. Praise God. Jesus is our ever living hope. You know, Friday, while we were here, we you know, just talk about and we discussed the, the events of Friday. Friday was a dark day in history. It was a dark day in Jerusalem. Many years ago, the many thought that this was it. Even the disciples reached a place of despondency and they were in hiding. It was a bleak day. The word of God says that the sun hid itself for three hours while Jesus was on the cross. Praise God. There was darkness over the earth. The, the, the created thing, creation itself, was so sad about Friday because an innocent man was put to death for the sins of many. And we can, you know, just reminisce on some of the occurrences of Friday. We can remember Jesus praying in Gethsemane. He prayed, Father, if it is possible, oh, please do not uh, allow me to continue to the cross. We can also remember the betrayal of Judas. 30 pieces of silver. Was that what the master teacher, Jesus Christ, was worth? We also recognize that Jesus was tried at night. He was arrested and he was tried unfairly. It was a night trial. That was not so to be. We also see that his disciple, one of the three who were very close to Jesus, Peter, he denied that he even know this man Jesus. We also read the word of God and we listened to the word and we heard the interrogation from Herod and Pilate. And for them, Jesus was like a, a laughing stock. Herod said, I really wanted to see him. He was happy that Jesus was brought before him because he wanted Jesus to perform miracles in front of him. And so they mocked him. He was beaten. He was insulted. It was a lonely, painful trek up the hill of Golgotha with a heavy cross. All the burdens of the world was laid upon his shoulder. He was stricken. Isaiah said that there was no, you know, there, there, there was no, no place I mean, that you could even recognize that he was God. He was so marred. He was unrecognizable. Praise God for Jesus. But he took it and he went through all of that just for me and just for you. They hammered God's nails, seven to nine inches nails, in his hands and in his feet. And to make matters worse, they gave him, you know, the crucifixion was the worst punishment. And they crucified him between two thieves. This was God we have come to love. And when he said, I thirst, they gave him sour wine. And they pierced his side. The scripture said that blood and water ran out. Jesus suffered the worst death. He was ridiculed by even the thief, one of them who was being crucified by his side. And he took it. He was a lamb to the slaughter. He opened not his mouth, but we see that another thief, another who recognized his own wrong, was able to say, leave him alone. Praise the name of Jesus. And that day, on the cross, redemption came to a thief on that cross. Even as Jesus suffered, even as he felt the pain of the nails, even as he felt that the, 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 the sword pierced in his side, even as he looked down and he saw all the people who on Sunday before they came out and they said, Oh, Santa, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Even as he looked 
endured all of that because he had a purpose. He said he came to bind up the brokenhearted. He came to set at liberty those who are bound. He came to release the captives from prison. You see why he had to say to the thief who confessed his sins that today I'm taking you with me. Because this is why I died. I died for you. And so, 1 Peter 1 verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King. By His boundless mercy, we have been born again to an ever-living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. There's a living hope. Praise God. Jesus is our living hope. Do you believe it? Amen. Praise God. Say after me, Jesus, Jesus. my ever living hope. My ever living hope. Jesus, Jesus. my ever living hope. hope. Hallelujah. Many are hopeless this morning, but the sons of God, the daughters of God, we have a hope. of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to us about a woman and some women who went to the tomb. Praise God. The, 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 the word of God says in St. John that Mary went to the tomb early in the morning. The other gospel writers and all four gospels mention this story. It's an important story and all four gospels carry it. But John chose to pinpoint Mary of Magdalene, Mary Magdalene. He said, Mary, she came to the tomb early in the morning. And Mary and the other women, as the other gospel writers would give the account, they got up early and they were brave, courageous women. They braved, you know, everything that was happening at the time. The disciples, the men, hiding in their lodging places. But Mary had a task to do. And the word of God said that she came to the sepulchre. And they were saying, how are we going to move away the stone? It's a big, great stone. How are we going to get to the body? Because their intention was to annoy the body of Jesus Christ. So they returned to the tomb. They were there on Friday and it's Sunday morning and they wanted to do their due diligence for the master. But there was an obstacle. Mark 16 verse 3 said, they said to one another, who will roll back the stone for us out of the door, out of the entrance? Who is going to push back that stone out of the groove where it is Fastened. But according to Matthew's account of the story, it reported that there was a great earthquake. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. A great earthquake! Ah, oh, Jesus didn't need any help oh, for him to get out of that darkness, to get out of the tomb, to free himself. He was God. He was the one who created the Launch the stone, shake up the earth, and even other bodies who were in the tomb in that vicinity. The word of God says that many who were dead, they were raised to life because the resurrected Christ was on the scene. Hallelujah! Resurrection came for those who were dead many years ago. Hallelujah. It says something to us this morning that it doesn't matter what our situation is and how hard it looks. Oh, I don't know what you're coming this morning. But no matter how difficult your problem is, it is no match to the rest.
resurrected Lord. Whatever he has to do, he will do it to set you free. He didn't he say to Martha, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Every bad situation must be removed and, and stand up and stand back when Jesus comes on the scene. Praise God. And so while they were wondering, how is it that I'm going to get to the body of Jesus? When they went to the place, they realized that the stone was already rolled back. What a God we serve this morning. Places 
But Mary continued to look into that sepulchre. Mary continued to bend down and to look in. Yes, and she was crying. And we can also say today that within those tears, Mary was also praying, calling upon God. She was, she was weeping as she stooped and looked into the sepulchre. She looked again. And when she looked, one of the times she saw two angels. Praise God. Hallelujah. Peter and John did not have the opportunity to see the angels. But Mary saw the angels because Mary was persistent. Hallelujah. If you are going to win the victory, you have to be persistent. You can't just stay in one look. You have to look again. You have to linger around your situation. And let me tell you something. Many will not be there with you. Mary was there alone in that early morning. The strong men had gone back. But as Mary continued, you know, to weep and to look at her condition, she saw angels. Praise the name of Jesus. What a wonderful God we serve. Many times we are in our place of brokenness and we are challenged by our situations. But angels will come and minister unto us. Just like they ministered to Jesus when he was in Gethsemane. We are the children of the living God. And if we stay under his power and his presence, angels will minister to us. And what a revelation. What a revelation came to Mary. Matthew 28 verse 5 says, The angel says, said to Mary, Do not be alarmed and be afraid, Mary. For I know that you are looking for Jesus. Oh, I don't know who you are looking for this morning. Praise God. But Jesus is not wrapped up in linen cloth. In a sepulchre. Jesus is risen. Jesus Mary. Does the angel know what you are looking for this morning? Who are you looking for? Praise God. Who are you looking for this morning? Yes, we have to be looking for Jesus. And we will get the revelation from an angel. He said, Jesus is not here. He's risen as he said he would. Come, let me show you the place. Where he had laid. Yeah. Let me show you the place where he was laid. Yes, this is the church's home this morning. That Jesus was in the tomb. Yes, he died. And he was buried. And he was laid in a tomb. But he's not there. Hallelujah. That's the hope we have this morning. And if Jesus didn't die, then it, our hope will not be as powerful as it is this morning. Because he said, was coming to die. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him Jesus. should not perish. Hallelujah. He knew where he was going by the look of his face Hallelujah. as he hanged on the cross. And Luke says that the angel said to Mary, why are you looking for the living among the dead. Are you looking for the living among the dead this morning? By our actions, we ought to know that Jesus is alive and Jesus is our ever living hope this morning. And so Jesus and the angel, they were asking the same question of Mary, woman, why are you crying so uncontrollably? What is your problem? What is your situation? What is your challenge and God is asking of you my church and you my friends as you have come to worship with us online and those who are here he knows your situation why are you crying so uncontrollably Friday is past today is Sunday today is the day of triumph today is the day of resurrection the devil is the Hallelujah. Who are you looking for? Are you looking for Jesus? Praise God. And Mary said, they have taken away my Lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. She knew. 
she had a problem. She knew that the sepulcher was empty, but Jesus was not there. And so Mary, as she continued to stay at her place of issue, she saw, she, she saw somebody else. And the word of God says that Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying so? For whom are you looking? And supposing that it was the gardener. She replied, Sir, if you carry him away from here, tell me where you are putting, and I will take him away. Mary did not recognize Jesus. Are we like Mary this morning? Who, when Jesus comes to us to solve our deepest problems and to give us the remedy for our condition, we still don't recognize that we are talking to Jesus. But I, I appreciate Mary because if she had not lingered at the tomb, then she would not have her own personal experience of the risen Christ. And can I tell you, she was the first one to see Jesus. Because she lingered at the place of her pain. She saw Jesus for herself and she spoke to him even though at first she could not recognize him. Oh, with all the trauma of Friday, with all the brokenness, with her eyes filled with tears, she, she thought she was talking to the gardener. Oh, Mary in her unregenerated state did not realize that Jesus would be right there beside her in the same place where she's broken. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus called her name. Jesus said Mary. And she recognized the familiar voice. When Jesus called your name, you will remember his voice. Jesus himself had said to his disciples, my sheep know my voice. Mary recognized the voice of Jesus. And she said, Rabboni, my master, my Lord. Hallelujah. What a hallelujah in that tomb that morning when Mary realized that Jesus was alive. Hallelujah. When Mary went to the tomb, Jesus Christ was gone. But she experienced him. She saw him bodily. Hallelujah. She talked to him, Sister Wigan. Yes, when we stay in our place of brokenness, we will eventually experience Jesus. And we will have an up close and personal experience with him. Amen. Listen for Jesus calling your name this morning. So, what is our responsibility? What is our responsibility? Uh, we have looked at uh, the, 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 the revealing of the angel saying, don't look for him among the dead. But what is our responsibility when we can see and hear and talk to Jesus and hold on to Jesus? What is our responsibility this morning? Jesus said to Mary, do not cling to me, do not hug me, do not embrace me, do not get too comfortable with me being on earth because this is not my abode, this is not my eternal. I am going back to my father. I'm going back to be spirit being. I'm going back to your God. I'm going back to my God. I'm going back to the Trinity to be one with my father. I'm coming away from this broken place. Isn't that the church is all this morning? That one day we will join Jesus. He will burst the clouds and he will come with all the holy angels and we will be caught up to meet him in the air. For those who are alive, Jesus said, go to my brethren and tell them I am ascending to the Father. Praise God. What a message for a woman out of her brokenness. She received the commissioning. She received the command to go. She received the evangelistic word. She received that gospel, the news that is good news. She received it so that she could go and tell somebody else that Jesus is alive. Oh, it is an awesome responsibility, but it is a pleasant thing to know that we too have been called into the body of Jesus and among his followers to tell somebody that Jesus 
Jesus is alive. And Mary did just that. She ran to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is alive. That I saw him for myself. This is my testimony. I saw him with the Lord. I spoke to him myself. He's no longer dead. He's alive. And he's going back to the Father. It is a privilege to carry the gospel message to a lost and dying world. Because many are in sin. Many are dying in their sins. And many are dying in hopelessness. Many are taking their own lives. Like Judas reached a place where he reached his rope. He could not go on anymore. And so many are like Judas who hanged himself. But we the church, we have a message of hope, a message of deliverance. We have a message that will bring deliverance to many. Hallelujah. 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 What a God we serve this morning. So Philippians 3 verse 10 says, Paul says that, that he wants to know Jesus. He wants a personal experience with Jesus and Jesus is mighty power. Yeah, that power that raised up Jesus from the dead. We as a church, we ought to be saved like the Apostle Paul this morning. That I may know him. I want to know Jesus. That like I Mary knew Jesus. And saw him, felt him, knelt before him, worshipped him, heard his voice, heard him calling her name. I want to know him. I want to experience that same resurrection power. The power that set an earthquake in the ground. Dislodged the stone. Shake up the earth's foundation. And send the guards. Those wicked ones. Flee from cover. And Paul says. I just don't want to just know him. But I want to share in his suffering. If we are going to know Jesus personally. That we have to share in his suffering. You see, it, when we share his suffering, we are not sharing it uh, in a way that uh, we, it, it's the end, but it's a means to an end. Uh, praise God. We realize that Mary was not broken and crying for long because as she stayed in that place, uh, Jesus appeared to her, angels ministered to her. We have to share in the suffering as well. We have to share in the Good Friday happenings. We have to go back there and become like Jesus in his death. So many of us want to run away from the pain. But we have to. Because the hallelujah morning is coming. Faith in Jesus includes sharing in his life. We have to take on the life of Christ. We have to revel in his power. The resurrection power. Praise God. We want that experience. We want the dunamis. We want the Holy Spirit. We want to be able to hear Jesus speaking to us, calling our name, giving us hope for every time we go to him in our brokenness. Praise the name of Jesus. It is also very important to share his suffering. The Christian faith, my brothers and sisters, provides the freedom from the hardships that we may suffer. And Paul and the early church know about that. They were persecuted in the worst ways. The scripture says that Paul was stoned. Ah, he was stoned, he was beaten, and he was dragged out of the city. But when the believers with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ encircled Paul, hey, he got up and he continued to declare Jesus. We need the resurrection power to do the work that Jesus has called us to do. Without the power, we are we, we cannot do anything. Or we cannot move on. We thank God for the resurrection power this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can share in both the joys and the struggles. The apostles shared in the joys and the struggles. They were able to deliver persons from sin and their different paralysis. Their different conditions. Some were blind. Yes, the man who they met on the way to the temple, he was begging. His status was so low. But when Chief but Paul and Silas encountered him, he ran from where he was seated. 
seated at that place and he ran into the place of worship and he gave God praise. It was a hallelujah time for that man because the resurrection power was upon the apostles. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And the same can be our portion today. The, the resurrection power is what is going to cause us to do the impossible. To set people free from their sins. We have to become like Jesus. Dying to the world of sin and temptation. As we celebrate Jesus this morning, our ever living hope, let it not be said that we are dabbling in sin. We have to die. We, we must bury the old nature, the old Adamic nature, and live in righteousness. Be transformed by that same resurrection power. We must become like Jesus in his burial. And so we bury that old nature. Because we were indeed buried with Christ in his death when we came to him. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. The resurrection life is the new life. I love the resurrection life because it's a life of holiness. It's a life that will declare that Jesus Christ is alive in us. And Jesus is not going to walk up and down on earth again. But we are here as the sons of God. We are walking and living and we are testimony to the fact that Jesus is alive. Where are we as a church today? Where are we today as believers, as the body of Christ? We see that Mary Magdalene and the other women, they desired Jesus. They brought their spices. They were not too concerned about what, the, uh, what others would say. We see how Mary, the woman, wanted to identify with Jesus in his suffering and in his pain. And so they desired to go and anoint even the body that was there. But hope sprung alive when they realized that their master, Rabboni, their Lord, was not in the grave. Hallelujah. What are you doing early in the morning, saints, when you get up? Are you going to brave the hostility of those around you? The sin and the condition that is in our society today? And are you willing to tell somebody that Jesus Christ is no longer in the grave, but that Jesus is alive? And he is bringing hope to their lives. Lord. That's how we can identify with Jesus. Tell somebody that Jesus is alive and well. And you may encounter an obstacle while you are about to do that. But move ahead anyhow. And you know, sometimes we do have our own situation. But Jesus is counting on us. To look past our own self, to deny ourselves, to ignore our own lives and our own desires and focus on him. And as we focus on him, we can bring salvation and deliverance to our lives as well as to others, to our families, to our workplaces, to our church. Jesus is counting on us. He's our ever living hope this morning. We don't have to be despondent. And we don't have to feel hopeless because Jesus is alive. When I look back at my own life today, I know that had it not been for Jesus, I would not have escaped all the different isms and schism and the situations, the conditions, you know, the ill health, the hardships, the pain, the struggles, the brokenness. But thank God for Jesus. He comes on time, every time. And he's a deliverer, a strong deliverer. Jesus is alive today. He's our ever-living hope. He's no longer in the grave, but he is alive. And he is living in every heart who wants to receive him. Do you want to receive the risen Savior this morning? He's risen, he's alive. If you want Jesus this morning, he's available. He said he came to set the captives free. And if you are in sin, you are in bondage. If you are in sin, you are serving the devil. Jesus said, you are of the, your father the devil. Because you cannot serve Jesus and serve Satan. But I'm so glad this morning that the sin and the devil and all the evil of this world cannot and, 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 and will not be able to hold you captive if you turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. 
The word of God says that Jesus went down to hell and he took the keys of hell and the grave. Praise God. And he spoiled principalities and powers and he made a show of them publicly in his death. He triumphed over them. And today, you don't have to be, you know, downcast and distressed and downtrodden. You don't have to be hopeless this morning. For Jesus is your heaven living womb. And he comes to intercede on your behalf. He's your great high priest this morning. So you and I have a responsibility to go and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's risen from the dead. From the dead and he is Lord. And because he lives, I and you can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all our fears are gone. Because he lives, our lives are worth living just because he lives. God bless you this morning. God bless you this morning. I just want the church to stand this morning as we just continue to celebrate Jesus. I want you all to stand. And I wonder if there is one person on this resurrection morning, one soul, one individual who you have heard the word this morning and the word is saying that Jesus Christ is no longer in the grave. But he's alive. And he's alive for one reason. He's alive to give you hope and a future. He's alive to save your soul. That's what is important. Your soul is important. One day this robe of flesh will fall off. And you will have to give an account for what you have done with what God has given you. What you have inside of you that makes you breathe and live is really God inside of you. What are you going to do with what Jesus has given you? What are you going to do with what Jesus did for you on the cross? He laid himself down. He gave his own life. And it is your time to respond to this act of love. Praise God. So if you feel that way, if Jesus is speaking to you this morning, for those who are not saved, if Jesus is speaking to your heart this morning, and you want us to pray for you that, you know, you will receive, you know, that resurrection power, that power that will make you make a good choice, the right choice, that will make you move from out of darkness into a place of hope and love and life. I want you to raise your hand. If you feel that this is what you want, praise God. I see that and God bless you. Praise God. Saints and the people as you have come, there's going to come a day when the gospel will not be preached again. But today you are hearing the message. The gospel is Jesus came to earth to die. And he did it. And today he is alive. Hallelujah. He wants to make you live forever with him. He said to Mary, I am ascending to my father, to your father. Will you make him your father this morning? Praise God. I'm going to ask you to take one more step by faith and come to this altar. Praise God. Show by your walking to the altar that you want to receive Jesus. That you are done away with the old life. That Satan has done enough work on you. And today you want to give Jesus everything and allow him to take control of your life. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise. Clap. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. This is what the resurrection is all about.
all my skills, everything that I've ever done to displease you. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross to deliver me from my sins. I accept the pardon today. Living over, we draw on you today for love. 
that you are our hope, you are our strength, you are our redeemer, and in you we live and move and have our being. We thank you for the gathering. We thank you for those online. We thank you for your words of the shared of God through Reverend French. Even now pray for fresh anointing upon her life. I pray you lift her up. Give her fresh courage. Give her fresh insight, mighty God. Reveal yourself afresh to her and cause her, oh God, to do greater works for you in this time and this season. Father, as we go from the sanctuary, we ask that your power will go with us. Let your Holy Spirit, oh God, take control of every situation that perplexes our minds. Oh God, we place our care we place our burden on you today because Lord you say that you we must cast our cares on you because you care for us and I pray for everyone who is not yet saved that God they will not leave the way they came that even now your Holy Spirit will do a work in their hearts transform their minds bring about a, 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 an urge and a nudge in their spirit Lord to let them know that it's full time to surrender all to you cover us under your blood mighty God as we look to you for the rest of this week have your way in our lives in Jesus name we pray amen, amen and amen the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you as you continue to trust in Jesus, our ever living hope. Bless God. I want to hear the story. Yes, Lord. I want to hear the story. I really want to hear the story.